What is it that we find so fascinating about ghost towns? Is it a natural curiosity about places people lived and loved and then left? What little is left of the community of Drybridge is about a half mile down these railroad tracks. We were given special permission by the federal government to give you a rare tour of a place that few people know exists and fewer still have ever visited. It's the Bay Area's only ghost town. It's the most relaxing place in the world. And these... It really is the most relaxing. The voices of its long-gone residents. The owners of the houses once in a while had maybe rather questionable characters with them. I don't know. I didn't know those people very well. Ghostly echoes that help us tell the tale of a place whose history is at times as murky as the bay waters that now threaten it. Drawbridge, as it's known, has been found and forgotten, declared dead and brought back to life countless times in newsprint over the years. They did seem to call it a ghost town, like no one lived there. And even though it doesn't look like it now, for more than a century, people called Drawbridge home. They built lives on its marsh mud. Starting in 1876 with one man, an employee of the South Pacific Coast Railroad, whose job it was to open and to close the bridges at each end of Station Island, as Drawbridge was also known. Hunters and fishermen would soon follow. They were the pioneers in that area. They built that up. For generations, Barton Lane's family has lived in Alfiso, about three miles south of Drawbridge, and has witnessed firsthand the community's rise and fall. It looks totally different now than it did. It's all overgrown and dilapidated. At its height, in its heyday, nearly a hundred families lived on the island, and hundreds more came to fish and hunt and sail and gamble on weekends. They enjoyed being out there. They enjoyed the independence. Things began to change for Drawbridge in the early 1930s. The island itself was sinking as underground aquifers across the South Bay were pumped dry, and pollution from surrounding neighborhoods only made matters worse. The sewage was being piped out to Coyote Creek and dumped into it, not being treated. Drawbridge became a sinking and stinking shadow of itself, and all but its most diehard residents slowly, one by one, moved away. Vandalism became more of an issue because there were less and less people living there, so it looked abandoned, even though some of the houses clearly were not. Even the train to which Drawbridge owes its existence, eventually stopped stopping there, only adding to its isolation. I shot my windows out quite a number of times. I got more bullet holes in that place than you can shake the The last living resident, Charlie Luce, left in 1979 after it became part of the San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge, and a fateful decision was made to leave Drawbridge to sink slowly back into the marsh. As the area restores, you know, our goal is that it again becomes kind of that uh, wildlife mecca where there's birds and fish that are using that area again. Off limits and inaccessible, Drawbridge became a ghost town, a label it had so long resisted. To get anywhere near Drawbridge today, you need a boat. Bart's son Kyle took us on an overcast afternoon last month to get a closer look at the crumbling, weather-beaten remnants of the buildings on the northern end of the island. Tide and time waits for nobody. People out there took care of it. it, it it's been neglected. Just let it rot away. In the dying light, what little is left of Drawbridge comes to life, painted in a palette of amber and bronze, its weathered walls and rusted roofs now a canvas for trespassing graffiti artists eager to declare, I was there once, and that they share with the spirits of this place. And Drawbridge, Devon Feely, KPIX 5. We want to emphasize Drawbridge is off limits today. It's illegal and unsafe to go there. You have to worry about trains, tides, and the condition of the buildings, which are falling further and further into disrepair.